Hello and welcome to our Monday night broadcast. Thank you for those of you who are catching this on the rebroadcast on either YouTube or Facebook and always welcome to those of you who are jumping on live with us as well. Tonight we are going to be talking about words and the words that we choose to, um, to describe ourselves and or situations that we find ourselves in. And hopefully I'm going to help you guys understand the difference between having something and actually taking ownership of something. And I'm gonna share a little bit of my own personal journey with you guys tonight as well. If you're jumping on with us live, please make sure that you put a comment in the comment section so that I do know that you are here with us and always let me know whether you've been a past member of ours, if you're a current member of one of our courses, or um, if you are intermittent fasting, anything you wanna share with us so we get to know you, that would be fantastic. And then if you're catching us on the rebroadcast, I always highly recommend that you do the same thing so that we uh, know that you were here and we can start to develop a relationship with you as well. I know not everyone can jump on live. My name is Diane and for the past 25 years or so, I have been helping women find nutrition plans and fitness programs to help them look and feel their best and live their most authentic life. And here in this community of amazing women, we are doing that through the practice of intermittent fasting and developing a keto-like lifestyle so that we can take advantage of living our most authentic lives. So like I said, tonight we are going to be talking about words and how we use words to describe ourselves or situations that we might find ourselves in. And I'm gonna share with you what I did when I started this journey and some very specific decisions I made about my health and well-being. And I, um, I started getting sick probably about four or five years ago, I think. Um, it was right before we moved to Texas and I just noticed some things that were going on in my body. I had a breast cancer scare, I had a bout with a really bad case of shingles, or I went through about four or five different uh, prescription like viral, antiviral medications. None of them seemed to work for me and I believe they sort of broke my body down. I was going through some life changes hormonally and just seemed like everything that uh, was at one time really easy for me to manage and fix really started to go downhill on me. And um, it wasn't until I was actually diagnosed as a pre-diabetic and um, insulin resistant woman that I really took ownership of being sick. And I, I also know that I had some things going on with my thyroid and I'm really convinced I had some autoimmune disorder going on. But, but once I got my diagnosis of being pre-diabetic and I was like, a tenth of a point away from being diabetic. I was on the verge of being considered diabetic um, and that would have changed my whole situation as far as choices I had to make. Um, but when I was diagnosed as a pre-diabetic, I made a very, very um, conscious decision that I was not gonna get tested for anything else that was going on in my body. I didn't get my hormone levels checked. I didn't get my thyroid levels checked. And I also did not get um, any further testing as far as an autoimmune disorder goes. I did not want to own a label and I didn't want to take possession of any kind of diagnosis. Uh, Pre-diabetic was enough for me. And what that did for me was really empower me and force me to go into research mode. I had to take control of my health and I had to take control of how I was feeling uh, so that I could feel better. And I did not want to be classified or, or put in a box or put through the rigors of what happens when you go into a doctor's office and you say that you're feeling X, Y, Z way, or you have these sort of symptoms and they put you through that battery of testing from the absolute worst possible, possible scenario to whatever it is that they end up finding. I just didn't want to go through that. Um, and so I started researching instead. And so what I ended up finding through my research and what we have here today is this amazing community of intermittent fasting for today's aging woman. And what it all boiled down to was I just had to take control of my health. And when I took control of my health and I really started paying attention to the signs and signals that my body was sending me, I was able to adjust accordingly and then change how I was feeling. And thus changing the signs and symptoms that ended up showing up in my body. And so I love the fact that I can't say what autoimmune disorder that I was suffering from. I love the fact that I have no idea what was going on with my thyroid. I have 
like I'm so relieved that I don't have to um, claim any other sort of diagnosis. Even when my when I was going through menopause, my doctor was brilliant in giving me the advice of if you feel off hormonally, you're off hormonally. Like taking a blood test isn't going to do anything uh, to further, you know, advance the decision that you've already made about how you're feeling. You're out of balance. And that gave me a sense of power and a sense of, of urgency almost to just fix the imbalance. And that's when I started changing the way I was eating and really noticing the foods that I was intolerant to and understanding what types of food actually cause hormonal imbalances and what kind of things in our environment cause us to be out of balance at a time when naturally our body's going to be out of balance. When you're in a state of hormonal change, whether that's adolescence or pregnancy or breastfeeding or recovering from a pregnancy or going through perimenopause, whatever it is that your body's doing through the course of just nature, and then you throw in some things that environmentally start to keep you out of balance, your body doesn't know whether it's coming or going. And so what I decided to do was help my body understand if it was coming or going and take away some of those things that were were causing me to be in a little bit more of an unbalanced than what it was that I was suffering from. And what that did for me was allow me to, to um, live out what I wanted to live out lifestyle was wise. Um, and how it is I wanted to make the adjustments so that I could live authentically and didn't have to live by the description of what someone is supposed to live by if they have Hashimoto's or if they have fibromyalgia or if they have diabetes or if they have a hormonal imbalance because of menopause or any of those other classifications that we get when we go through those batteries of tests. And I refuse to take ownership of those things. And I refuse to say that those were things that I had um, as part of who I was as a woman. It was a temporary condition. Even what I had going on with diabetes, like I know I have sugar problems. I've known that my whole life. And when I started to really uncover my own natural food story, it made total sense to me why I had problems with sugar. It wasn't like that I, um, there was a, some something that suddenly like, uh, came upon me. It's something I'd been dealing with my whole life and it just finally like hit hit the max and I couldn't regulate it on my own. And so today I can, I have no idea. Like I said, I, I don't know what titles to put on what it was I was suffering from. And I know for some women that's really hard to understand or hard to accept. Like how do you know you were sick if you weren't diagnosed with anything? You know you're sick. Like you know when you felt a certain way for a certain period of your life or a certain period of time and those feelings change and, and, and they're not good feelings and you you suddenly can't get out of bed or you're suddenly not happy or you're suddenly putting on weight and you don't understand why it is, there's a difference and there's a shift and so you know something's not right. You don't have to necessarily own whatever those titles are and start to live your life that way and that's really the message that I want to send today. Whether it's descriptive words that you use about yourself when you're not feeling your best or it's a way that you've decided to live your life because of a title that was put on you, you have the choice and you have the opportunity and you have the right to not take ownership of those things and just treat them like they're temporary situations that when you become educated and experienced and empowered, you can change those temporary situations and you don't have to own those titles for yourself. The only titles I ever want to own are woman, wife, mother, grandmother. Like those are the roles of, of what I want to live out as my life. I do not want to live out the role of a hypoglycemic woman or a diabetic woman or a um, estrogen dominant woman or a woman who's suffering from some autoimmune disorder. I don't want to carry the burden of those titles. If that happens to me, I want it to be a very temporary situation that I take control of and I eliminate. So it doesn't have to be some some badge that I have to carry around or some check mark I have to check off on some medical uh, paperwork at some point down the road. I want to take control of the situation and eliminate it as much as possible. 
Now, with that being said, of course there are those situations where we have to be tested for things and we have to eliminate serious things um, and we have to make sure that we are getting a clean uh, bill of health. And lots of times that could be done through random blood work. And so that's exactly what I did when I was not feeling my best, as I said, just run blood work uh, so we know that there's nothing serious going on as far as my blood because your blood's going to pretty much tell you everything that's going on. And there was no scary things going on in my blood and nothing that alerted my doctor. It was all suffering that I was going through based on how my body was chemically breaking down things in my environment and things I was putting in it as far as nutrition goes. And when I really started paying attention to how my body was reacting in those situations, I was able to reverse a lot of the breaking down that was going on. So words matter. Words matter how you describe yourself. Words matter about a situation that you, you may be in health-wise. Words matter if you're diagnosed with something. Words matter in how you believe you're going to handle the situation. So I always recommend, and we talk about this a lot in the course that I teach, the Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman course, where we talk about some of these social and emotional aspects of owning um, something that's breaking us down and how that can make your mind really believe that's how you're supposed to be operating. And if you change the words that you're using in your head and you change your belief system and you start to develop a different plan of attack for how you're going to handle the situation, you have the power to reverse a lot of things that are going on in your life, in your body, in your mind, and in your health. And I think the more we start to think positively about things, the more we don't let words affect us or control us, and the more we stop taking ownership of some things that we're not happy with, the sooner we'll be able to deal with them and then hopefully be able to rid them from our lives. There are so many amazing women in this community who have shared some really amazing stories with us about struggles with some things that they've had going on in their life and how they've really um, been able to um, endure some some pretty serious things and come out the other side so much better by just keeping a positive frame of mind, making sure that they're not taking ownership of things that they do not want to have ownership of, and really choosing words carefully. Making sure that you're talking to yourself in a very positive tone, you're talking to yourself in the present tense, and that you believe that you have every right to overcome anything that you're battling that you're not happy with. So choose your words wisely and know that you do not have to take ownership of anything in your life that you are not happy with. There's always a way that you can battle something that's going on that you don't wanna have going on forever. So I hope me sharing a little bit of my story with you guys helps. Um, I, I honestly can't tell you some of the serious things that my body was going through, but I can tell you they will not be a serious problem for me again. Um, like I said, sugar has been one of those things that uh, when I went back and retraced my food story, it made sense where I was a couple of years ago with, with having those sugar problems, but I fixed them. And for those uh, people that tell you that, you know, once you're diabetic, you're always diabetic, or once you're insulin resistant, you're always ins insulin resistant, I think that what the better way to explain that to us women especially is that yeah, you might have some issues with sugar down the road, but you don't have to be a diabetic forever. I will not be a diabetic. I will not have insulin resistance issues because I'm educated now and I'm experienced and I reversed all of those numbers. And as long as I stay determined to not own those titles and to not take possession of them, I will never have those problems again. And then all you have to do is make sure that the life that you've created for yourself and the lifestyle that you have for yourself will end up yielding for you exactly what it is that you want to have. And so make sure you're using your words wisely when you're describing yourself and the life that you want to set up for yourself. And I promise you, if you act out those words, you'll be able to have everything that you want. So let me... Uh, Michael, why don't you go ahead? Michael's going to read um, our YouTube questions and comments and the uh, uh, people who've introduced themselves on YouTube. So he'll read those to me because he's got my iPad, and then I'll respond to them, and then uh, Facebook will go ahead and jump on with you guys here tonight too. Okay, we have M. Miller. Hi, all. I so appreciate this conversation. And then we have Diane Hazelton. She says, wonderful wisdom. And she commented to uh, M. Miller. She said, yes, M. Miller. Awesome. 
That's it? That's it for... Okay, cool. Let me see what we got over here on um, Facebook. And if you guys are on YouTube, make sure you leave us a comment in the in the comment section, and we'll be able to um, say hello to you and read your comment while we're live here for sure. Uh, let's see. Jill, good evening, girlfriend. Sarah, tuning in from Australia. I love when my Australian women are here. It's good to have you with us. Carrie, hello, Diane. I am not in one of your courses, but sure do love learning from you. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you being here. Um, it's always nice to have you guys jumping in with us on these discussions as well. Yvonne, hello, girlfriend. Love having you here. Christy from Australia. That's two in Australia. Good to have you guys. Um, and yeah, you did the April course, so congratulations on finishing that one. Jane, hello. Rita from North Carolina. Good to have you. Michelle from Louisiana. Desiree, currently in the July course, um, but love all the info. Yeah, well, these are just little tidbits. Um, what you guys get in the, the course is actually a little bit deeper than this and allows you an opportunity to practice stuff. But I love being able to, to share some stuff with you guys that I hope you'll be able to take and start thinking um, through your daily life and maybe even helping someone else get through a tough situation with just picking different words to describe the situation you're in. And, and you know, words can 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 get you deeper into a situation or words can pull you out of a situation. Um, so make sure that even when you're speaking with your friends who might be going through a tough time, use your words carefully to help them dig themselves out of a situation. Um, words are really, really powerful. I have always believed that and we wanna make sure we keep practicing that for sure. Amanda, good to see you. Jane, hello. Ursula, hello, all the way from New Zealand. Well, hello, Ursula. Teresa, you inspire me, Diane. I too do not want to be diabetic. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, you're you're welcome. Um, I um, it took me a really long time to get healthy with all of this, not just physically healthy, but my mental and emotional connection to food, and um, and having to change my lifestyle. Like there was a lot of things I like. There was a lot of food I literally like cried over. Um, and then when I realized the importance of me and the importance of me feeling good and the importance of me healing my brain and all the other things I, I, uh, all the work that I did, um, there's no food that will ever be more important than me. And when I came to that uh, realization and got really healthy with food, I decided to, to add in some things and some control things, I guess, into my life. And I've recently been testing my uh, blood glucose. Uh, for those people who don't think that you can be cured from insulin resistance, uh, my waking, uh, so my morning blood glucose levels are in their 70s, um, which is very far from being insulin resistant. So you can cure yourself of these kind of things and you can keep them in control um, if you just make a decision that you are more important than any food. Um, and then once you make that decision and you own it, then you can have the health and well-being that you want. Um, and, and you have to just make that decision for sure. It's, it can be tough, but I think it can be done. And then, then that's when I always say you're truly healed. Um, let's see. Uh, Teresa, got you. Sandy, hello from Florida. Rita, the course has taught me to be more independent and to give myself kudos when deserved. When people tell me you need to eat three times a day, good for you, girlfriend. But guess what? My numbers are just the way I feel. Makes me feel better about me. Looking forward uh, to what comes next. Thanks, part and family. Oh, Rita, you're so welcome. Yeah, and there's nothing better than um, than uh, than really being able to prove that that way of living is not the best way to live. And and the the healthier we get, the more. I think those conversations really stick out to us and then we can just kind of walk away from, from people who are like pointing their finger at us, telling that, us that we're doing wrong. When you feel amazing and you're finally healthy and you're living a certain way and you have people telling you you have to eat so many times a day or you have to eat a certain way and then all they do is complain about how horrible they feel and then they tell you all the things that they're owning about their sicknesses, um, we just we just keep our chin up and we gracefully walk away and you just go do your own thing and Rita you're doing that well for sure Lynn I can't begin to describe the number of ways my health has improved keeping things simple and consistent makes a world of difference in your well-being Lynn I agree 100% simple is super easy and doing nothing is uh, one of the best things you can do for yourself that's for sure uh, Catherine struggling with how to lower carbs with being vegetarian okay so uh, Catherine, what you want to do is you want to keep the, your vegetarianism on the vegetable side if all possible and just try to keep fruit to a minimum. So you don't have to necessarily cut fruit all the way out if you can control how much of it you eat. But um, you want to keep like dark leafy greens in your diet. Um, we have a lot of vegetarians in this community. You can do small even like 
you know, um, servings of like quinoa and brown rice if you're, or white rice even if your body can handle it, sweet potatoes. Uh, I would just monitor it for a while and make sure that when you do put carbs in, they're necessary carbs and you're really conscious about it. Um, and then see how that goes. And then you want to keep your fat high as well. So put avocado oil and coconut oil on everything. And the fat also kind of helps balance things out. So hopefully that, that helps a little bit. Uh, Tina, uh, hi from New York. Thanks so much for the content tonight. It's so important to get away from labels because they can pigeonhole us forever. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. And I think I had a teacher friend tell me that about, you know, um, like, like if you grow up in a house with people who have dyslexia or something and, or you're like bad at math, let's say you believe you're bad at math and then you tell your kids like, oh yeah, you know, our family, we're just bad at math. And then you believe you're bad at math before you ever really give math a try kind of thing. Like we can really convince our brains to believing that we are a certain way or we have to be a certain way or even our health has to be a certain way. Um, I, you know, have diabetes in my family. I have heart disease in my family. Michael has the same thing in his family. Like we could just believe that we're supposed to be that way at a certain point in our life, but we're choosing to be something else and we don't want to take on those labels and that responsibility. We're choosing to live our life a different way. Um, and that has to be a conscious choice. You almost have to say it out loud or write it out and then really take ownership of what it is you're choosing to do with your life. And then once you make that decision, you just live it out loud. And then once you start living it out loud, magically it happens. And not so much magically, but it feels magical because you have power over it. Um, and then you get to reap the benefits of making those very conscious decisions. So congratulations to all of you. It sounds like you're doing well. Um, Melissa, hello. Do you still count discounts? Uh, do you still get discounts with base culture? Yeah, uh, we have a code. Um, Kara might be able to put it up for you guys. I think it's 20% off of base culture. It might be Diane 20 when you're there or die 20, one of those two things. So D Y 20 or D Y A N N 20. And I think they're giving our community a 20%, um, discount and I'm not like affiliated with them in any way other than I want you guys to be able to have a good quality food at an affordable price. So any company that you know that I'm working with that uh, I mean that I uh, that we use in our home a lot if they offer a discount I always make sure I get it for you guys and then I, I pass it on. So thanks for bringing that up and we'll get that to you for sure or just email me it might be easier to get it to you that way. Tina um, okay, did that one. Melissa, got that one. Lynn, hello and excited to catch you live. April course graduate, May transitional course, now in the F3 course. Feeling great and love living the IF lifestyle. Thanks for all you do, Diana Michael. Oh, you're welcome, Lynn. We love having you around uh, for sure. And always thank you guys for including Michael. It's so yeah. nice that... Um, <laughs> that he's so welcome in this amazing community of mostly women. And I know when we do our IF stuff on Fridays, it's we really encourage you guys to bring your husbands with you. But I love that you guys are so, so appreciative and so gracious to my Michael. Um, it makes what we get to do so much more fun. Um, so thanks for always including him. Um, Ursula, love that you are more important than any food. Yes, so darn true, exactly. I cried over french fries like now that like now i'm out of that situation it like makes me laugh a little bit but i cried over french fries like how sad that i would never be able to eat french fries again and then what i really learned is that french fries aren't bad and this is what i try to teach in my course too like there's no bad food there's only food that makes you feel bad or bad for you chemically so french fries aren't bad for me even though i really try to be aware of like the carbs that i eat french fries are really good for me when i get really uh, good quality french fries so I asked two questions and I just posted this on my insta stories and my instagram the other day like I have a french fry test and you, I asked two questions when I go to a restaurant I say are your potatoes cut and made here meaning like is it a potato and not like a bunch of pressed processed stuff in the form of a potato like slice so is it a real potato and what oil do you cook it in and I know that there's varying degrees of good oils and bad oils, but when you go out to a restaurant, you do the best that you can. And we mostly eat at home. So the only oil that I will not eat is soybean oil. And so if there's no soybean oil and it's an, a real potato cut in the restaurant, um, then that passes the french fry test for me. So there four french fries aren't bad for me but if i don't ask those two questions i'm gonna get duped by either soybean oil or a processed french fry that's full of gluten and soy lecithin and then i'm gonna get sick so keep in mind that there's no bad food and this is another one of those areas where you don't want to label things so food is not bad it it's only individually bad for some of us and we have to figure out what those foods are so 
there's no bad food in our life. There's just food that makes me feel bad and I've made a conscious decision to eliminate it from my life. Um, and you have to work through that process as well. So I don't cry over french fries anymore. If I go to a restaurant and it doesn't pass the test, I just find something else to eat because I know that there will be a restaurant that we find that will pass the test. And so then I enjoy my french fries 100% for sure. Um, let's see, Susan forgot to eat supper. Guess I'll shoot for a 24 hour fast. Heck yeah, Susan, if you're not hungry, you might as well. Um, Ursula, how cool we are both watching. Hope you get something to eat at, something great out of it. Oh, that must be your friend. That's awesome. Uh, okay, so I think Kara put the base culture. The discount is D-Y-A-N-N, so you don't have to put a 20 after it, but it is a 20% discount, so take advantage of it from their website for sure. You want to take advantage of any of those discounts they're willing to offer our amazing community. And then Teresa, I love that you teach us to uh, read food labels to check what is in our food. I love the lesson on soy. Yeah, soy. Big time. Uh, what you got over there, Michael? Okay, we got Lady of Virtue 247. Hey, Great Miss. Name. She says, Hey, Miss Ann. <laughs> um, and then you got Cynthia Wilson. Being educated is key to being proactive in your healing. Thank yes. you, Diane, for sharing your story. I had to be proactive myself and be educated about pre diabetes. Yes. I'm on a good path now. Yay. Congratulations to you. Then there was uh, uh, Denise Leda. She she posted a comment. She retracted a couple times. I think uh, she got cut off somehow. So see if you can get your question back up for us. And we have Carol Wheeler. She said, just dropped in. I fasted most of the day, although I drank whole cream in my several cups of coffee. Does that still count as intermittent fasting? Well, here's the, what was her name? Carol Wheeler. Carol. If you have to drink several cups of coffee, I would, pr I'm going to assume, and I know it's not always safe to assume, but I'm going to assume you're probably not balanced out yet with your hormones. Your body should be able to get through the day without several cups of coffee. Um, so you're probably haven't fasted clean yet. There's probably not enough time and consistency under your belt with your intermittent fasting for your hormones to be balanced out. Um, and when they balance out, you don't need coffee. Like coffee is kind of one of those things that becomes a treat. And I know when I really, when I first started doing this, I would pour myself a cup of coffee out of habit. And then at the end of the day, my cup of coffee was full. Like I never even needed it. Your body should be able to go to sleep at night and wake up on its own without any depressants or stimulants. And you won't be able to do that until you get balanced out. So I would probably assume you're not clean, like, fasting clean enough and you probably haven't got yourself to that point where your hormones especially your hunger hormones are balanced out so i would highly recommend that you think about what it is you're doing in your fasting window um, and get yourself to that point where you're really clean um, so that you can tap into what we call the energized sense of calm and that's really when your hormones are balanced out and you can get through your day without coffee at all much less several cups um colleen i'm really struggling i'm at the beginning of my journey i'm not losing weight and i'm not sure why i am also swimming and doing exercise classes and it seems that it's making me maintain my weight rather than losing it yeah colleen because again your hormones aren't balanced out when when i i hear about you guys struggling like the, I, my immediate response wants to be get in our course like we like literally within seven days people are noticing women are noticing a difference in our course it's little tweaks and oftentimes it's because you're listening to all these little outside people telling you that there's certain things that are okay in your fasting window or you can do this in your feasting window and this the harsh reality is for us women who are hormonally imbalanced and are struggling with losing weight, there's a set way to get this done. And we do it in as little as three weeks. Like you'll feel it in little in as little as a week going through our course with the information that we lay out for you. So if you're struggling and you're frustrated, see if you can get yourself in our course that's starting in August. It will make the world of difference for you. And you'll get so much education and so much experience and so much support that you won't struggle anymore. Um, and it really is just a matter of getting your hormones balanced out and knowing what to look for and listen for with your body so you can figure all of that out. I still have more here. Okay, what you got? Lisa Gerlach. Hello from Illinois. Thanks for sharing. And Jennifer T says, first time catching live. I feel amazing since I've been doing IF. I'm Yay. trying to break the cycle of diabetes in my family. Good. I'm a mom and I refuse to be diabetic. Good for you. And that right there, refusing to be something and then and then proactively taking the steps to make sure that it doesn't happen is all you need to do. Like it's 
it's really that simple and and, and we overcomplicate it because we're t we're over informed and this person says one thing and then this person says this thing and then this person says this thing and really what we need to do is sometimes is just stop listening and just start thinking um, and that's really what we teach you to do in our courses I don't tell you guys what to do I say think about this consider this have you ever tried this did you know about this and you guys really make the decisions for yourself which is empowering because then you decide what's best for you you decide what makes you happy you decide the things in your life that are going to help you look and feel your best while living your most authentic life and then you can end this um, unhealthy relationship that we have with food end this dieting cycle and end this feeling of panic um, that we we've had for so many years desperately trying to get to a certain weight or desperately trying to get to a certain look only to have it go away when we stop dieting um, and we really shouldn't be thinking that way anymore we should really be creating um, a system of habits that does create a lifestyle for us I have Diane Hazelton hey she says Carol well she asked a question before but she said Carol I was wondering if fasting with cream is better than not at all too is fasting with it in my opinion when you're healing your body um, and, and you, have, you guys have to remember I've been I'm in phase two of where I was a, a few years ago so when I was healing my body and what I teach in my intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course for women who are healing is you have to fast clean like you have to fast for X amount of time only putting water or black coffee or black tea. And for some women, they can't even handle the black tea or black coffee. It's just too much for them. You have to go straight water for a certain amount of hours. And that's where we talk about doing nothing and really embracing so much of your life and, and the freedom that you have when you're not stuck to food or dependent on coffee to start your day or dependent on a glass of wine to get to sleep at night. Like your body should be able to do all of those things on its own. It can't do that when it's constantly in need of this to be able to do this and in need of that to be able to do that and when's the last time you let your body self-regulate like when's the last time i know for me it was a really long time and when i really got to that point where i was not afraid to not have coffee and i wasn't afraid to have a glass of wine before i went to bed and i wasn't afraid of all of those things that i was so stuck on for so long and i really let my body start to control where I was going with my journey is when I really became free. Um, and so don't hold on to that coffee so much if it's not getting you anywhere and it's not helping you. And yeah, you can add it back in, but you have to add it back in at a, at a time when you're healthy and, um, and when your body can survive without it. And we have to prove to ourselves that we can survive without it so we can enjoy it when we put it back in. And I got Bridget Baker. She says, hello, Diane and Michael. Hello from OKC. Uh, she said, I had to change my words and confession about my health. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So my confession is I am walking in good health. Good Yay, for you. Yay, good for you. That's awesome. Yep, that's awesome. Melissa, I have tried every diet out there and nothing worked. IF is the best thing ever. After first week, lost weight and feel better. Getting compliments from people after a week of IF. Yeah, because the first thing that happens is the bloat and the water uh, retention and inflammation goes away and your skin is healthy. And this, I mean, all of that, the only way I could describe it is sickness starts to leave your body when your body has an opportunity to be healthy and regulate itself. So yes, and that's awesome. After a week, you're getting compliments and you're not dieting. Um, and that's the one thing that I really love about this lifestyle is I haven't given up anything that I enjoy and I had to make that mind shift between the fact of you know eating something and getting pleasure out of a food or really enjoying the way I feel in my own skin and I'm telling you right now like unless I make just a mistake and that happens sometimes too I'll share with you guys in a second what happened to us this weekend but you know there's times where I just trust a restaurant and I'm like yeah, I think I'll try something and you go we go out to eat and then the next day I'm like ooh, we're not eating there again but because I'm healthy in my emotions and my mental state about it, like I don't beat myself up about it. I just 
fasted away. Um, and so when you get to that point of healthiness where you go, there's nothing, there's no food that I'm going to allow the taste of to be more important to me than the way I'm going to feel and function and be present with the people that I love in my life. And when you're sick, and when you don't feel good, and when you feel guilty about food choices, and you feel like you're dieting and being deprived, you are not a present woman. You are not present with the people that you that you that you say you care about because you're preoccupied about all the bad things. So we have to take that preoccupation away, and we have to get our mind thinking in a positive way. We have to use those positive words, and we have to release the ownership of bad things and make decisions about how it is we wanna look and feel. And when you can make those and you don't feel like you're um, sacrificing happiness for a good taste of something, then you're on your way to healing for sure. And so, you know, that goes back to the coffee stuff. And like, I love coffee probably more in the summertime. I make an iced coffee and I love it. Um, and I enjoy the process of having my iced coffee outside while Gabby's playing in the pool. Um, but then, then, then there's days where if like coffee's not available, like I'm fine, I don't necessarily need it. And it's just like a thing that I enjoy the process of. So when you stop the dependency part of it and you find some just joy in something, that's when you know that it's, it's really serving its purpose for you. I have Presa Rojas, she says hello from Washington. And then Bridget Baker again, she says, I believe after doing IF for a year, my metabolism has changed. Yes, yeah, sped up for sure. Um, we talk about that in the course too. So that's a myth that if you intermittent fast, it will slow down your metabolism. It actually does the opposite of that. It speeds it up. And what happens, um, and, and so uh, I don't remember who it was who said that they were exercising and not losing weight. Um, I went through the same thing. I was running 10 miles a day, you guys, 10 miles a day and starving myself. I was eating every two hours and eating about 1200 calories and panic running on the treadmill. Like I would watch um, uh, like Scandal or whatever we would tape. I would watch two hours of TV just so I could justify being on the treadmill for 10 miles. Um, and I wasn't losing any weight and I was putting on a lot of body fat and it's because my body was in starvation mode. And so when you're constantly eating throughout the day and you're not allowing your body to really be in a truly fasted state, you're starving yourself. Um, and I know it doesn't seem like it should be that way, but there's studies now that are proving that. And so when you're in a truly fasted state, your body is plentifully eating. Um, and so there's no way you can starve yourself. And what ends up happening is your metabolism revs up to what your body actually needs in, um, in your fasted state. So it's fascinating what we can do um, when we understand the science behind it and then let our bodies just do what it's designed to do. Um, Ursula, Ursula, thank you. Uh, we'll try to ditch the coffee. Yeah, I would say, you know, try to ditch it if you feel like it's something that's hindering you. But, um, you know, it just uh, you just don't want to be that, that person that's like, don't talk to me until I had my coffee. Like, you don't want to be that dependent on it. And the way that I really um, like to start my day is I have a bottle, a full bottle of, where's my bottle at? I have a full bottle of water before I have anything. So this starts my day and this puts me in a really good mood. Um, and it really kind of does get my digestive system started and really does energize me. And then I make the decision if I want a cup of coffee. And sometimes it's just more of like me and Michael having a social time together of a cup of coffee in the morning, or we do it specifically um, to enhance what it is that we're doing with what we're trying to do with some fat burning stuff that we have going on right now and some stuff we're doing with our brain health. But make sure that you, um, you're not dependent on it to just be a pleasant person and that it's something that maybe you find some joy out of. And if you, if you need to take a break for a while to make that decision for yourself, then that's, yeah, definitely when you wanna ditch the coffee for sure. But by no means are we saying coffee's bad. Just make sure you're not using it as a crutch to get through your life. Make sure it's a tool that you're using um, and that you're finding joy in it for sure. Then Fresa Rojas has another question. She says, does a tablespoon of coconut oil break fast? Yes, it does. A tablespoon of coconut oil will break a clean fast. So you have to understand that there's different types of fasting. And if you're healing, if you're trying to heal your body and balance out your hormones, in my opinion, and what I teach is that you need to be in a clean fasted state until you're healed. And then you have an opportunity to do some playing around with your fasting. But while you're healing, it is imperative that you're in a clean fasted state so you can get your body to burn through a lot of that stored glycogen and then learn how to confidently eat away at your own body fat, which will help balance out your hormones for sure as well. Anything else? 
I don't have anything else. Okay, cool. Let me see. Um, Ursula. Oh no, I'm not grouchy without it at all. Well, then, awesome. Yes, yeah, then try some black coffee. Try it for a while and see how you do without coffee at all. I know we and we've gone through phases. So um, I'm in a new phase right now. I'm just trying to. I'm playing around with some stuff with my with my feasting window, and um, I'm fasting long, but I'm fasting dirty. Um, and if you don't understand what that is, I'm not going to go into it yet. But I'm just fasting um, as a healed woman because I'm because I'm not in the healing process anymore. So I have some flexibility with playing around with some stuff, and I'm I'm eating one meal a day, like one solid meal of food a day, and then the rest of the time I'm fasting and I'm keeping my carb count really low because I'm experimenting with some things so that I can give more information to you guys and share with you my thoughts and feelings and experiences with stuff. And, um, and I'm loving it and I don't have any sugar issues and I don't have a pre-diabetic state I'm working with and my brain's feeling really healthy. So I'm playing with some stuff to see like when you get healed, what are some things that we can do in this community and still maintain what it is we want to maintain. And I love that about when you really get comfortable and confident with food and you get really healed about your emotional relationship with food and how you utilize food in your everyday life you do really have an opportunity to play around with some stuff and that's when food's fun when you use it as a um as a tool and you have it um in your life in appropriate places and, and michael and i really do have a lot of fun with like hey let's go two weeks and not drink any coffee or you know let's do this for a couple weeks and see how it how it works and it's really fun having a spouse that's involved with this too and he right now is doing uh, where he's doing like three days a week where he's fasting for 20 hours um, and he's loving that and the other days like there's some days he's not fasting at all and you know how husbands are he's losing all kinds of weight and all kinds of body fat and it's really working for him and for me I'm kind of going the other route and I'm going back to some really long fasts and doing one meal a day and I'm enjoying the clarity of my brain and I'm enjoying the energy that I have and how my body is feeling and um, but I'm not clean fasting the way I was before because I don't need to. Everything else for me is already fixed and balanced out. And so it's really fun to be able to kind of play around with some things. And it keeps this from being boring um, and so routine that you sort of like, you, you have the tendency to kind of like jump off for a little while because you're like, oh, I'm so tired of fasting. No, change it up. Just like you do workouts and just like you do everything else, um, change things up when you get to that point of where you're feeling completely healed emotionally, mentally, and physically, and then see what that does for your body. And it's fascinating when you can get to the point where you can really manipulate uh, what your body's doing with, with nutrients and, um, and the way that you're living your life around food. It's absolutely super fun. It's like a hobby for us and we love it. So what I wanted to share with you guys this, the, um, tonight too, and then we'll let you go uh, with what happened to me this weekend. So I'm pretty gluten-free. I would say I'm like 99% gluten-free and I don't like to title things as like I'm gluten-free or I'm uh, paleo or I'm dairy-free. Like I just choose to not eat foods that make me feel bad and gluten happens to be one of those things that makes me feel bad. I'm not celiac. It just I haven't had any good experiences since I've cut it out of my life. Well, we went to a pizza place this weekend and I was like, you know, Mike Logan is a hungry 18 year old boy. Michael doesn't have any problems with gluten. He like he appeases me when I want to go gluten free. So that's cool. But we were at a, a, a restaurant and we ordered regular pizza. And probably within an hour after eating dinner, I felt fine during dinner. I didn't feel like any major things going on. And about an hour after eating dinner, I was sick as a dog, like digestively sick. Everything that I ate was no longer in my system. It just came, it was awful. I'll just, I'll just say that, I won't get into too much detail. Completely awful. As soon as everything left my system, I felt fine. And then the very next day I woke up no gluten type or soy type of feelings whatsoever. I felt absolutely fantastic. Body felt super thin, didn't have any water retention issues, didn't have any like intolerance issues, but I felt like my body moved into a new phase of like reaction to gluten where before I used to retain water. I mean, I would blow up like a water balloon if I had gluten. Um, then it went into, I broke out in eczema when I had gluten. And then it was like, I, I, I break out in these little blisters on my feet, random, and they would peel. And then now this new phase where I digestively cannot handle it and it just exits 
my body as fast as it can. And so pay attention to those, those transitions that your body goes through as well. So that convinced me that no gluten for me. Uh, when we go out to have pizza, I'll have a salad or something. I just don't want to go through that experience again. And it was, it was that warning sign for me like, okay, we've gone through these phases together and this is my last warning to you, don't put gluten in your life. And I'm okay with that. Uh, because the the feeling that I got the next day was like he see how you can feel when it's not in your body you felt amazing and if I wouldn't have had that experience of having it just my digestive system just not flushing it out I would have woken up the next morning probably feeling really awful um, so pay attention to those signs and signals and know that food reactions can evolve and they can change sometimes they change for the better and you can become more tolerant of food and then sometimes they can change for the worse and be, can become more aggressive and can be, become more obvious um, and then if you're not paying attention to those and you keep putting them back in then that's when we kind of end up being broken down autoimmune wise and start to get really really sick so pay attention and know that they're going to change with, oh, uh, with you over time especially when you're getting other intolerance is out as well um, so I haven't had anything else that would have bothered me it was just whatever was in that pizza and um, and so I, I'm pretty convinced that it was gluten for sure um, Ursula oh my god not only is my oldest friend of 56 years watching in Australia now my cousin Reville is also watching from Australia too oh gosh family reunion for you girlfriend Ursula good to have all your friends here with us that's awesome um, and Teresa just wanted to share never cared for mineral water but now love it first thing in the morning yeah I know it took a little bit of getting used to the mineral water thing but we this like this unless I'm out somewhere this is the only water I drink um, I drink like six bottles a day and I absolutely love it between this the orange one and then um, this one too and then we have I've been adding in a little bit of LaCroix lately too and some um, Topo Chico, but this right here, it's like, um, I would, it's like, it's like my drug of choice. Like it makes me feel so happy and so energized and it makes me sleep so well. Like I absolutely love it. So when you can find your mineral water that you like, I say stick with it, it's the best stuff ever. Melissa, does IF get rid of um, psoriasis and eczema? Um, Okay, psoriasis and eczema is an indication that there's something inside of you that's going on that's trying to get out. Um, so I would say yes, probably because it's going to allow your body an opportunity to be empty and process through some things. Um, um, and then you want to make sure that when you're in your feasting window, you pay attention to how your body responds when you put things back in. So when you're fasting and you're empty, your body almost resets. And then when you put something in, so we went to Mexico on vacation and the skincare products from their salon. So all the shower um, stuff, the shampoo, the conditioner, the lotions were all like, um, you know, spa level stuff, but they had gluten in them. So by the time I came back from Mexico, I had eczema like all over my skin and my face. And my girlfriend who was celiac was on vacation with us. And she pointed out to me that their stuff had uh, gluten in it. So that's how I kind of made the connection between the eczema that I had and the products that I was using on my skin. So what you put in your body and what you put on your body and what you have around your body can cause you to have things like um, psoriasis and eczema. So you got to pay attention to all of those things. Check your, your labels of your deodorant, your lotions, your shampoos, your conditioners. Make sure they're gluten-free, soy-free, paraben-free. All of those things could be contributing yeah, to dairy. And, and dairy can cause um, eczema too. When my daughter was born uh, my son had a really um, intense dairy intolerance and his came out with like projectile vomiting and just a really bad stomach all the time and crying and just stomach pain and Gabby had dairy issues as well I have dairy issues as well but Gabby's came out as a constipation and eczema on her skin um, and so you could have a dairy intolerance too and it's coming out as um, eczema so when something's trying to come out of your body it's because of what you're putting into it it's not a surface thing it's your body trying to rid the toxins out so go as clean as you can read all the stuff um, label wise in your environment on your environment and inside your environment and get it cleaned up and then fast so your body has an opportunity to process it out and then get a reset and start over um, and then definitely keep us posted on how you're doing with that. We'll help you any way we can here for sure, Melissa. 
uh, Gravel. Hello, girlfriend. Okay, anything else over there, Michael? And then we'll cut it off. Uh, Doanne Dewitt. I hope I said the first name right. Hello from Panama City, Florida. Uh, and then you have uh, Linda Rich. I've been keto for five months. Yay. I do some fasting. My sugar is still very high. I do not take insulin <laughs> anymore. What else can I do? Um, if are you keto? Like, I would have to know like what kind of keto you are. Um, sometimes some of those keto processed foods can be something that can keep you out of balance as well. Um, I I would have to see more of what you're eating in your keto lifestyle um, to help you with that one for sure. And then make sure when you're fasting, you fast clean. So I not I know a lot of people who follow a keto ketogenic diet and they incorporate fasting they don't fast clean so you want to make sure when you're fasting you're fasting clean so your body has a chance to process through those sugars um, and then if you can jump into our August course we teach you all of this and really help you get through um, those initial stages of fasting and understand what your body's going through so you can appreciate that feeling you get when you're in that truly fasted state there's nothing more empowering than your body like living off its own resources it's absolutely amazing so you're probably not giving your body that opportunity okay you have m fraz is it okay to do omad do i know what that is one meal a day oh one meal a day okay mm -hmm. <laughs> is it okay to do one meal a day when healing or is it best to do uh 20 slash four then do one meal a day once healed I, I, my answer to that is always de it depends on what your relationship with food is um and, and when you're when you're good with food relationship wise like mentally and emotionally then switching between one meal a day and eating for four hours um, you know that will kind of fix itself out when you're fasting for 20 hours at clean um, that four-hour window is really um, is really uh, open so there'll be days when you your, your your break fast time will come and you might not feel hungry well then don't break your fast. You might go to 23 hours and that might be a day when you're one meal a day. And then when you're, and then there might be another day where you're like eating continuously for four hours. You just want to make sure that what you're choosing to feast on is nutrient dense. So you're feeding your body the right things and then make sure that you're very conscious about what you're putting in your body and then just go with the flow of it. Uh, you know, one meal a day is not something that um, you have to do to be successful. It's just, like I said, for me, I'm just experimenting with it right now just to see like, like is this a, even a fun way to live? Like we love food, we love to eat. So the thought of only eating once a day for the rest of my life is something I definitely don't have any desire to do. I'm just testing some things out. Um, but you don't have to eat one meal a day to be successful at this. What I truly believe you have to do to heal your body is clean, fast for at least 20 hours a day and choose very nutrient dense foods to put in your feasting window and you have to do that for a long enough period of time whatever that is for you to get your hormones balanced out and when your hormones are balanced out there'll be no question that that's happening because it's just an amazing feeling that will that you'll you'll be able to notice once it's happening for you gg nunez says hi you skipped me way up there uh, oh. uh gg i'm sorry I, I looked up there i don't see any comment um it's not showing on my end uh melissa says i do have a problem with dairy and so do my girls okay melissa i would say cut all dairy out and dairy is um dairy is milk products the obvious dairy but what really got me and my daughter so i was nursing her so if i let any of these things sneak in and it came through my breast milk she was sick too carrageenan casein whey um and it's in everything that's processed. So when I was trying to detox my body of dairy, I literally lived on like lettuce and chicken and was nursing and just had a baby. So I thought, I literally thought I was gonna die for a little while there, but it took two weeks to get it out of my system and then her skin cleared up and she was a happy baby. I nursed her for 14 months after I got the dairy out of my system. Whey, casein, carrageenan, any kind of milk product you wanna just completely cut it out of your, your life for probably a good two to three weeks and your daughter's life too, then start reintroducing some stuff and see how it works. Greek yogurt you have to get rid of. Um, all of those things get rid of. Um, read every ingredients label because whey, carrageenan, and casein are in a lot of things are like snuck in. Um, things like that have seasoning on them, 
it's in breads, all those things, they all have some sort of dairy in them as a filler kind of thing. So be diligent about reading your labels, cut it out for a few weeks, and I bet you all will start to feel better for sure. Uh, Gigi, can you type your question again? I, I don't see your question. Okay, anymore. Gigi, Michael's waiting for you. Uh, Ursula, does cider vinegar break a clean fast? Yes, it does. Everything except water. Everything except water breaks a clean fast. Coffee can be used and can be used to enhance hunger hormones. So that's why we use it when we're in our course and why I really recommend it for women who are going through like the initial stages of fasting. Um, it is that one thing that, you know, that you can kind of use as a tool and help your hunger hormones balance out and won't get you out of whack. Um, but, but then there's some women who, um, who can't have coffee either. So if you really want a clean fast, it's water only. And I know when I was at the height of my healing and clean fasting, I only did water too. Um, I didn't start adding in coffee until I actually started feeling healed. Did she come in yet? Uh, no, she didn't come in, but uh, I have another question. Okay. Hey, Kiefer, thanks for all the info you provide. And then uh, Geneva, uh, Geneva Anderson, I drink green tea with fresh lemons every morning. I feel stuck and I'm at a freeze. Uh, doing this for a month. Okay, because green tea and lemon is a feast. It's not a fast. So um, I know that there's people who say that you can put lemon in your water and it helps your digestive system and all that kind of stuff. But if you really need to heal and you're stuck, you have to get rid of all, we call those crutches. They're, they're not helping your gut become empty. And what you really need is your gut to become empty. Help your gut biome heal itself. Get yourself into a deep cleanse so that you can process through um, all of your hormones that are imbalanced, get them all balanced out, and then you can start adding some stuff in. But what we've really found in this community is that we really start to let go of some of those things that we were holding on so tightly um, about because an empty gut is a gut that has the opportunity to heal itself. You do not have to put a bunch of elixirs and stuff if you're gut in your gut if you're just giving it a chance to heal and the, the chance to heal is really letting it just be empty. Anything else over there? I thought it's just uh, someone pop up. Uh, Walter Romanoff, hi, I have a daughter not eating well and she is a senior in college starting to gain weight. She's probably having some hormonal balance imbalances too and it could be stress related with being a college student and if she's eating in like, um, you know, like cafeteria food or whatever at the college, um, that could be it. She could have some um, gluten and soy issues too. So if she's interested or receptive to some advice, what I would recommend is um, see if her, wherever she's eating has gluten-free um, and soy-free options. All you have to do is ask the question. They should be able to provide you with that information because those are two very, very common allergens. Um, so they have to be aware of those things in their food because so many people have really serious reactions to those things. So just have her ask, like, where can I get food that doesn't have soy or gluten in it and dairy? And they should be able to help her out. Okay, we got Gigi now. Okay, she, Gigi. Got she says, I have no idea why it's not posting. Uh, I sent it again. It was regarding cholesterol. And her okay. question is, uh, 248 total cholesterol and I clean fast for over two months, not overweight. Well, sometimes your cholesterol has to like work its way out and you have to know what the breakdown of your cholesterol is. So by not by sheer numbers, I also have high cholesterol, but I have the good high cholesterol. So my doctor's not concerned at all about my cholesterol numbers, um, as a whole because broken down they're all the right numbers so um medical um studies and new medical research is out there um not so much doctors are buying into this but there's a lot of homeopathic people who are really looking at the cholesterol breakdowns in a different way because i'm healthy uh because i have no like um outlying medical conditions and because like i said my numbers are good so the good cholesterol is good and the bad cholesterol is low um I'm fine. So I would say break down your cholesterol, see what your triglycerides are like, see what other um, kind of um, blood things you have going on. And if everything else looks okay, 
talk it over with your doctor and see if you can get a, 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 a better breakdown of your cholesterol. And then if like for some people, they just naturally have high cholesterol. And if you're one of those people, then you might have to watch some of the things you're putting in your feast, especially if you're eating a ketogenic diet. It's It can be a little heavy on cholesterol building type of foods. And so just pick and choose what you want to have in your life that makes you happy. And then if you can get rid of some things, I would say get rid of some things as well. Um, a good thing for naturally lowering cholesterol is um, niacin. So maybe adding in a niacin supplementation to your feast might help um, as well. That's a, That will help kind of lower down cholesterol too. Okay, that's it. That's it. Awesome. Okay, let me see what Colleen said and I think we're out of here. Colleen, what is the name of the HCO that you're drinking? Okay, so this is mountain valley water for some reason i don't know where you live but in texas it's super hard to find we have to go through a water delivery service so we have them deliver it to our home this like literally it, i can't wait to wake up in the morning and have this my amazing husband puts a bottle of this on my bathroom counter every night so it's there for me in the morning when i wake up i start my day with this i end my day with this and i have it throughout my day i absolutely love it it can be a little bit on the pricey side but um, this makes me feel amazing. It's helped with my insomnia. I used to have horrible foot cramps, like to the point where like my feet would be distorted. They would just tighten up and like cramp. And I don't have that at all anymore. I don't get leg cramps. I don't have night sweats. And oftentimes we have those things because we're low in magnesium. And this water has calcium, magnesium, and potassium in it. Um, so it's the perfect blend of minerals that we need. Um, so uh, mineral water, adding mineral water to your daily routine is definitely a plus if you're suffering from any of those things. Um, yeah, we don't have it here in Vancouver. Okay, so Colleen, what you want to do is just do like I, I say, go read labels of water. So go to the water section, the bottled water section of your grocery store and start turning around bottles. And you want to look for either mount, uh, mineral or spring water. Those are like the two like marketing words. And then read the ingredients label and see what's in it. And what you want is calcium, magnesium, and potassium. Um, and sometimes sodium is, is an also a great thing you want to have in your water. Um, and if, you, if they have those things, then that's a great water for you. Uh, Topo Chico, um, what are some other ones? A Pellegrino is a good one. And there's another one that starts with a G. It's like, I think it's a German mineralized water. That's a really good one too. So just read your labels until you find one that works for you um, right in, in Canada. And then let us know what it is and we can share what brands you found um, to other people as well. Okay, cool. So with that being said, um, Mountain Water is the water she's drinking. Yep, thanks. Um, with that being said, we're gonna go. Monday night, we, uh, Michael is, it's kind of like a Michael's Friday. So we have, he has tomorrow off, so we're going to be home tomorrow. So we do a little TV watching. Uh, but thank you so much for jumping on live. Thanks for all of you who jump in on the rebroadcast with us. I loved that we had uh, an opportunity to have a great conversation. You guys always bring great questions. Definitely feel free to leave me some questions if you're joining on the rebroadcast. I do go back and reread those and I will um, answer your questions um, through there as well. And then have a great rest of your night tonight. Have a great day tomorrow. Use positive words when you're describing yourself and only use words in a way that they're going to empower you and not slow you down or feel like you have to settle for something that you're less than happy with. Um, we'll see you guys back here Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time where we'll find another amazing topic to talk about to help you guys out. And if you feel like you're stuck or struggling, please find a way to get into our August 4th class. I would love to have you within three short weeks. We teach you everything that you need to, to know about taking control of your health, balancing out your hormones, and really finding a nice place of freedom with what you have going on in the world of nutrients and what you're doing with your body. Have a good night. I'll see you guys later.